asked him, how do you see your kid's future? And he said to me, my grandfather walked 10 miles to work every day. My father walked five. I'm driving a Cadillac. My son is in a Mercedes. Said my grandson will be in a Ferrari. But he said my great-grandson will be walking again. So I asked him, I said, well, why is that? And he said to me, tough times create strong men. Strong men create easy times. Easy times create weak men. Weak men create tough times. He said to me, many will not understand, but you have to raise warriors. I would test shit in the worst way Don't bring a scan, trying to pop quizzes all day Cause of our chemistry, we do biology What's happening fam? LAR movement still moving Subscribe or die trying You see the thumbnail, you see the clip The, the selfishness caused these tough times I say yes. I, I've heard that quote so many times. And I understood it. And then just something in my brain just clicked like, that doesn't have to go down that way. It's a choice. And what I mean is, what you're saying is, generations are living off of the past generation's work. To the point that it becomes opulence and you wind up giving, how can I say this? You wind up giving a generation everything and and they, they don't care about the work. They just feel entitled. And thus, their selfishness, you know, they let the generations behind them suffer. And then I thought about it like, why not just skip over the selfish people? Why not just say, you know what? I see where this is going. I'll leave you an inheritance, but you can't, you, but you're not inheriting the whole shebang. You know, I'm going to put this in a trust for such and such. What, what's the issue with that? So, you, one man walks, the next man drives a car, the next man has a quote-unquote Cadillac, the next man has a Benz, the next man has a Ferrari. And then you go from Ferrari, basically, to Chevy, and then walking again. Because, you know, tough times make strong men. It's like, well, what about smart men could mitigate the tough times. Because smart men are know what's go oh, this is about to happen. Oh, I can see this. Junior Junior here gonna blow it all. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going for it. And yes, that's juvie. I want me a meal as in just how we feel. Don't worry about no bills, no negotiating deals. Um the issue becomes what? We're letting, even with that quote, we're letting, we're looking ahead and knowing what's going to happen after we're gone, and we're not planning for the fact that it can happen. Like, oh, well, you know, oh, well, you know, just, hey, hey, somebody's going to blow it all. Oh, well. You want a legacy? You know, learn to keep the legacy going. I saw this old, it's not, a, it's, it's not old, but it's Shaq talking. And Shaq was telling, it was like his man was telling him the difference between rich and wealthy. And he's like, Shaq, you're rich. I'm wealthy. And he's like, what's the difference? And he says, well, when I die, he said, I have this amount of money. When I die, 
my my kids are going to have this same amount of money. When when they die, my grandkids are going to have the same amount of money. When they die, my great grandkids are going to have the same amount of money. And then Shaq was like, well, how do you do that? And then he showed him. He said, you know, I don't live off of, he basically lives off 25% of what he takes home. So he pay, so you know so he lives off of twenty five percent, and the seventy five is for the generations after. But this has to but it has to be a plan. Think about it. You know, twenty five go to the kids, twenty five go to the grandkids, twenty five go to the great grandkids. There you go. And I'm talking about percentage. You get what I'm saying? So you can mitigate the tough times because if you give it all, if you give all the money to the kids and one of the kids blow it or they don't blow it, they spoil their kid and their kid's entitled, they're going to blow it and then they're going to have kids and the kid's going to struggle, you know? And all they're going to hear is the stories about how we came from money and we came from this and we came from that. And it's like, well, where is it at? Let's see what had happened was... You know what I'm saying? I was I was partying. You know, I was snorting a whole lot of coke. Uh, I was traveling the world. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did it all. Excuse me. So they ruined it. So if it's ruined, and you know it's going to be ruined, because that quote lets you know it's going to be ruined. So you know what? Do something about it. You know, if you ever watch the show uh, Power, you know, the one with Tyreek, you see he got an inheritance, he just blew it. But Ghost left left money to the daughter, but he got the daughter killed. Tyreek did, but he left the other money to the other daughter. It was like, hey, dog, I'm not going to give you all of this because if I give it to you, ain't nothing going to happen with it. He ain't leave his wife, his ex-wife Tasha, nothing because he knows she would have just tried to be a dope boy and blew it all. So, interestingly enough, Tariq, what did he do? Lost all of his money. Congratulations, you played yourself. But when it's all said and done and the sister becomes grown, guess what his sister's going to do? Have money and he's not. He's like, hey, you want to be in the streets, buddy. You know, you got me in foster care out this month. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's what's going on. It's, it's, it's this idea that, you know, we're selling ourselves short, not necessarily ourselves, we're selling our future generation short because we are not preparing for the selfishness, knowing that it's coming. And we've seen it in our own families, in our own, you know, sets of generations where, you know, we saw generations of people who inherited stuff and they just blew it all and it was like, they, they, they got holy on you. Jesus going to look out for you. Now that my, my, you know, my parents and my grandparents looked out for me. And what I did with it was just, I lived a good life. But Jesus shall provide for you. And after I blow all the money, can, could you take care of me now? I need a place to stay. I haven't been the best parent, but I know my God is a God to bless you. You know that? So we got if we've seen it happen, we have to prepare for it to happen. And we got to call a spade a spade when we, when we see our kids or grandkids and, and they're like, mm, that's the one that's going to make it work. And then they go, mm, no, that's a loser. That one's not going to do it. So, you know, they get, they get a piece, but they ain't getting, mm, 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 you know, mm, mm, nah, uh -uh, we're not doing this. So I'm just saying, yeah, yeah, sometimes the tough times aren't created just by weak men, they're created by selfishness and entitlement. So if we kill the selfishness and entitlement, and we plan for that, you know, we kill the, the propensity to have a bunch of uh, weak men to put strong men in that, in that, in that bad position. Because that strong person who's, who's walking again, if, if we would have thought it through properly, they could have took it to a completely different level. You know, but we left them at, at you know, at ground zero. You know, while dumb dumb got to do whatever he wanted to do. It makes no sense, man. We're we're investing in the wrong people. We're letting the wrong people get the bag. 
you know, get it to the right people so so actually generations could actually benefit off of it. But tell me what you think. Like, share, subscribe, or die trying. Catch y'all on the next one. Peace. You ever been to the top of the universe? I'm gonna take you.